Okay, let's go look at the personal compass and guidance. Venus is your personal sense of right and wrong. Your morals, how others in the world are dealt with, placed on a pedestal and raised up as the way life would be more beautiful. Now, this is your Venus is not for others. It's just for us, meaning the interpretation of what you value in relationships, what you love, what is beautiful to you, those things that you're learning about if it's undefined, or those things that you broadcast in your relationships with others, that is what your Venus stands for. It is your mores, okay? your personal moralistic values. Now, Jupiter says what Venus values, Jupiter will act on as a personal law. So the 11.86 mandala cycle establishes personal development. That's the uh, Jupiterian cycle. So this is just what we must do. When you ignore this law, your own Jupiters, you can ignore it at your own peril because Saturn will step in and challenge you or provide pain and suffering because human beings are very much motivated by the avoidance of pain. Saturn will act up in your design and you cannot ignore the problems that Saturn brings. So Saturn is here where our actions and beingness is judged. If we are correct, Saturn is silent and leaves us alone. If incorrect, this area will not work. It will be problematic or it will be a thorn in our side. Saturn literally standing for the bones and aging and calcification, remember. So if you're having problems with Saturn, wherever that gate activation is, then you can look back up to your Venus and Jupiter and contemplate your ability to follow your authority when it comes to these themes. It might feel uncomfortable to face these themes. When we're correct, Saturn will be silent and leave us alone. If incorrect, this area will not work. Remember, Saturn brings over seriousness. Okay, it will be a thorn in our side, whatever that thematic happens to be. Usually, most people, if they're operating out of integrity, will recognize the problem that Saturn shows up like in their lives is what I've noticed anyway. So getting their attention with or just asking a few questions that give you a touchstone into that signpost with them is really helpful as far as your ability to interpret that person's chart or change your analysis, its focus in a way that's going to most land with them. Because I'll tell you in my experience, if I begin a chart analysis, chasing down the wrong rabbit hole, let's say, I always ask that person, you know, um, if to, to connect with me vocally, just share with me, even if it's a, re a recording that I need to do with them, I need to hear where they're at. So I ask them to write me. So depending on what frequency that person is coming up with, that's how I'll start my analysis and what I'll emphasize. As you know, we know so much about human design. I could spend a whole week talking about somebody's charts, a connection with them every single day and not get to all of the bases of the, you know, all the downloads that I could give them. That would be overwhelming. But I'm just saying, if you need some guidance on how to treat this person as far as where they're at. Saturn is a signpost. It's a signpost of operating incorrectly. So the Saturn in an undefined state, in a gate 40. So you ask that person, are you having any digestive issues? How's your stomach? You know, um, do you ever get pain in your stomach? And if that's something that they start rambling on into all kinds of things. So maybe you don't do this in a foundation analysis, but you do do it in your coaching practice. Then you know that you need to go back up to Venus and check out what's going on with Venus. 